morning comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Hear the word of God. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord. I plead with you, Adia, and I plead with Syntec to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned and received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we have heard from the Old Testament and the New Testament a very, very familiar passage of Psalm 23 in this letter to the Philippians from the Apostle Paul, and now we ask that you would open our eyes to the spiritual truths that are held within these words, and Lord, as we begin to understand that they would not only transform us, but empower us to trust you more through the challenges, through the battles of this life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There was a survey that was posed to the general American public that asked this question. Is there a text in the Bible that is important for you during difficult times? Now, if you were asked that survey question, what would you say? Do you have a particular Bible passage that you go to? Well, the most popular answer was Psalm 23. Now, why would that be? I think it is because Psalm 23 dares us to trust in God during the most difficult and challenging times of our lives. Through the deepest valleys, when the circumstances are the worst. Through the darkest shadows, when sadness and loss try to destroy all that is good. The psalmist says, through all of this, dare to trust in God, even in the valley of shadow. Upon reading the psalm, we discover the psalmist speaks from experience. He has been through the valley. He has suffered. But through it all, he dared to trust in in God, and now God has brought him to a place of restoration and healing. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. This is the testimony of someone who has been in a very dark place. A place where many people would have given up. A, a place where the burdens of life pile up and begin to crush the soul. But the psalmist has focused perhaps on just a pinhole of light in this dark place. And he dared to trust in God. Now, when this was written during the history of, of Israel, there were many enemy country surrounding them bent on Israel's destruction. There would be times of great terror when God's people would be scattered like sheep, as if a wolf entered the flock and scattered them. There would be times when evil would rise up and, and overwhelm the people of Israel. 
when you consider it, the times of ancient Israel are very similar to today's world because we see this sort of terror, this sort of evil rising up all the time in today's world. But through it all, the psalmist declares, dare to trust in God during these times. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not be in want. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, dare to trust in God. Now the question comes to my mind. Why did the psalmist dare to trust in God even while walking through the valley of the shadow of death? To answer that question, I, I can sum it up with one word. The word promise. God promises Israel that he would be with them through it all. Whenever someone makes a promise to us, we have a choice. Either we believe it or we don't believe it. Either we trust in that person and the promise made or we do not trust. And what do we base our decision on to dare to trust someone or not? We base that decision on the person's character. Is that person honest? Is that person reliable and, and consistent? Is, is he committed to good things? It is his track record, a track record of, of integrity. And, and if it is, if we know that person's character, then we dare to trust that person. Well, the psalmist knew God. The psalmist knew God's character. God was worthy of his total trust. So what did the psalmist do in the midst of the valley of the shadow, in, in, in the midst of the most difficult and dark times of his life? He trusted God's promise that God would be with him and see him through this very difficult time. The waters may be rising. The flood may threaten to sweep him away, but he was going to trust in God through it all. God, like a good shepherd, would lead him step by step through these difficult circumstances. It may take time. It may require great patience, but God will get us through if we focus even on that pinhole of light that we see in the darkness that we're dwelling in. God will deliver us from this flood and lead us to quieter waters. Now as I read Psalm 23, I noticed something very important that God does not promise to do. The psalmist says that as he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, he will fear no evil. Evil is there, but he is not going to fear that evil. He also says that God prepares a table before him in the presence of his enemies. His enemies are there. But even in the presence of his enemies, God gives him this calm assurance. Even in the presence of evil, God gives him the power to overcome his fear. There is a calm assurance. There is a peace inside that God gives to us supernaturally. This peace, this calm that God gives to us through the valley of the shadow is not cheaply bought. It's a hard-won prize that comes through growing spiritually. You gain this peace as you grow spiritually. You gain this joy as you grow spiritually. It, it comes through taking the steps of trusting God. To do that, we must believe that God's promise is real. We must live and speak and act and think today fully trusting God, believing that God is with us, believing that He has our best interest at heart, believing that although we may be treading through rough waters, God is 
leading us step by step to a better place, a place of still waters, a place of restoration. Daring to trust God means living in, in the dark valley with the assurance that God is still in control because God is in control. We've got to speak and think and act as if God is in control through these difficult waters, even though they may be rising around us, even though there may be difficulties and suffering, God is with us. God is with you. God is with me. And He will, as we look to Him and trust Him, help us to progress step by step through these times. Now, in our, our New Testament lesson from the book of Philippians, we discover that the Philippian church was treading through rough waters. What was Paul's message to them there in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1? He says, stand fast in the Lord, my beloved. Stand fast in the Lord. Hang in there. Stand fast. One thing we need to, to realize, as Paul was writing this letter to the Philippians, where was he? He was in a Roman prison facing the death sentence. As he wrote these words to the Philippians, Paul himself was going through the valley of the shadow of the death, literally. But Paul dared to trust God even in the dark circumstances he was in. And that is why he could say to the Philippians, Stand fast in the Lord. Now the Philippians had their own problems. Like many growing churches at the time, they faced persecution from the Romans, from the pagan world around them. But not only were they facing persecution from the outside, there were conflicts within. There was a group of people known as the Judaizers who insisted that Gentile Christian believers had to conform to Mosaic law in order to be saved. And this, this caused a conflict because the Apostle Paul believed it was by grace that we're saved. God's forgiveness is extended to us freely through the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to follow the Mosaic law. And so that was a conflict. But there was also a conflict in the leadership of the church. There were two key people who were butting heads together at this time, and Paul pleaded uh, with, with the other leaders, let's help, help these people get along. So there was conflict from without, and there was conflict what, from within, but notice how Paul responds to these conflicts. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say it, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand, and, and here is a powerful verse that comes next. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. See, Paul recognized the Philippians were living in a world of conflict and stress and anxiety. They were in a dark valley, but despite this valley of shadow that they found themselves in, Paul dared them to trust in God, to stand firm. Paul first instructed them to rejoice. Now that seems ironic, but that's what he said. Begin to rejoice because God is going to see you through this. God is going to give you the power to lift you above these circumstances. God is going to move you from this place of rough waters into a much better place. So rejoice and believe that God is going to do that. <clears throat> then Paul gave them practical steps to dare to trust God. He said, whatever is making you anxious, whatever is causing you this great stress and conflict in your lives, through prayer, place it into God's hands. And, and then live, speak, act, think as if God is going to help you work through all these things because God will. 
Do what God tells you to do, yes. But don't let worry and fear cripple you. Place it into God's hands. Give God a chance to work it out. Take whatever steps God is calling you to take. But then embrace the joy and the peace that God has reserved for those who dare to trust Him. Now, that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do because as human beings, we have this tendency to focus on the shadows. We have this tendency to focus on the problem, on the enemy. But God says no. Focus on God. Dare to trust Him. Believing that God is with you and will lead you to that better place. And then God promises that we will experience that supernatural peace, that supernatural joy that is reserved 